Hello, welcome back to another Eye Care for Your Brain with board certified neuropsychologist, Dr. Karen Sullivan. Tonight we are talking about the neurology crisis. We have a serious supply and demand issue across the globe, but particularly here in the U.S. where neurology deserts are becoming more and more common, forcing patients to wait longer, to drive further to see brain health specialists, and sometimes not being seen at all for evaluation and treatment. We do have a physician shortage in general that is affecting most of the specialties, but in neurology, we are facing a particularly difficult future. There was a study in 2020 by the Medicare folks that showed that only 24% of people who have been diagnosed with a neurological condition have actually seen a neurologist. The National Center Workforce Analysis projects that there's going to be a 70 3% increase in the national shortages of neurologists in the U.S. to meet the demand by the year 2025. And this is at a time, this is where the demand comes in, where we actually have more people needing and wanting to see neurologists more than ever. This is for a few reasons. One is the baby boomers are aging. They are approaching risk age for age-related neurodegenerative diseases. Over the age of 65 is the biggest risk factor group for all of the different subtypes of dementia. We also have a new hope and disease modifying medications within the neurodegenerative conditions. We have the new Alzheimer's medications, the amyloid clearing antibody infusions, and people are wanting to get face to face with a brain health specialist to be able to talk about these. We also know that as people get older, we're going to see about a 20% increase in stroke, the most common neurological condition in the world. Another reason is because we are doing better and better with our interventions, we actually have more powerful medications and behavioral interventions for things like headache, seizures. Uh, we've never really been able to take care of brain health patients better than we can do now. So obviously people need to be in front of the specialist to get that. So what is causing this significant concern that there's not going to be enough neurologists to see patients in the future? Well, the first one is, again, a numbers game. We have many more physicians approaching retirement age in neurology than we do in almost any other specialty. The American Medical Association reports that the number of neurologists grew only by 598 over the last 10 years. So that's just a net of 598 if you consider how many neurologists have retired, how many have passed away, versus how many new have come in the field. Over 10 years, only 598 new providers. That's pretty significant. We also know that neurologists have a higher level of burnout than many other specialists. There was a study before the pandemic in 2019 that showed that 53% of neurologists in the Medscape National Physician burnout study had reported that they were significantly burned out. This increased slightly in 2023 to about 55%, with most neurologists reporting that burnout has a strong to severe impact on their lives. This is incredible. So not only do we have less and less actual providers to see, but when we get in front of them, do they really have the bandwidth to be able to take care of people in the optimal way? The most common reason for burnout amongst neurologists is reported to be the administration paperwork. This is not why people get into healthcare. This is not why people want to become clinicians. They don't want to sit around and be on a computer. They wanted to take care of people. Unfortunately, charting, getting prior authorizations, completing forms takes up about 18 hours in a brain health specialist week. That is pretty significant and it's higher than almost any other specialty. So at the end of the day, what we care about is the impact on people, right? So the biggest thing is this obviously reduces access to care, right? Which then results in poor patient outcomes. This then leads to increased suffering and increased disability. So ongoing access to a specialized brain health provider absolutely reduces disability because you are validated, you are properly evaluated, and you are given personalized brain health recommendations. And when that doesn't happen, it results in more problems, and that is more suffering and more disability. It, of course, also hurts caregivers. It reduces the quality of life for the remaining neurologists who are actually out there still trying to carry on with the specialty because they have more and more work-related demands. We saw a study pu published last month in the Journal of Neurology that talked about 
drive times for people to get to neurology clinics. And what they found was that 17% of all people through Medicare who had to see a neurologist had to travel an average of 81 miles. So, you know, 17% is not a lot, but if you just start to think that that likely reflects a whole range of other people who have difficulty just physically getting to the neurologist office. Do you think about who are these people who are being asked to travel these long distances? You potentially are in a wheelchair. There is potentially some cognitive involvement. And so just the idea of it being that long to get there is problematic. And this seems to happen much worse in rural areas, of course. Now, one thing that has really helped this, of course, is telehealth, and many providers have adapted. My entire practice right now is still on telehealth, and what we found is even though a few few people definitely don't like it and they wish we had an office, and in some ways I wish we did too, but the truth is I think we are able to support and care for more people because we are more accessible. I see many people from further distances now because we use Zoom than we did when people were able to come to our office. So right now, the wait time nationally to see a neurologist is about five to six months. Now, you might think that that is very long, but what they're actually predicting is in the next three to five years, if we don't do something, that is going to increase by four years, that it would take four years to maybe be able to see a specialist. That is absolutely unacceptable, and we cannot allow that to happen. So what are the solutions? Well, really, if you start to read this literature, what you're going to see is a lot of thought leaders are talking about the need to redistribute brain health specialty across all providers. So starting in primary care, going all the way through to palliative and hospice, we need a team of providers that is going to direct care. So yes, we still need specialists. We still need to be able to triage the right patients early as possible to the specialist, but we also need to increase the competency of primary care, family medicine, internal medicine providers to understand brain health matters better. They're gonna have to screen for it in more depth. They're gonna have to be able to have these delicate, sensitive, expert level conversations with their patients in a more informed way. We're gonna need to figure out how it is that we can get the right people to the neurologist in the shortest amount of time. So that is going to uh, require a bit of a transformation in healthcare. The American Academy of Neurology is trying to encourage more neurologists to actually go into general neurology and stop specializing so much. About a third of US neurologists are generalists and the rest identify as specialists, so as movement disorder, experts, dementia, epilepsy, some other subspecialty. And this is different from other parts of the world, like Europe in particular, where it's much more common for the neurologist to identify as a generalist. So about 28% of U.S. neurologists feel that they are generalists, where in Europe, across 37 countries, this was almost 76%. So we've got a big discrepancy here. The U.S. predictions are so concerning that the government has actually tried to get involved. And there's something called the Resident Physician Shortage Reduction Act of 2023, which is going to try to add 14,000 more neurology residency positions over the next seven years. This is a bill that has bipartisan support, that has over 100 professional groups, organizations, societies have submitted letters and testimony saying we are facing a neurology crisis in the U.S. So for you in the brain health community, what this really means is you need to advocate better than you ever have before. You have to take an active role in your brain health care. You have to ask for that referral. You have to pursue that referral. You have to Ask the, the people on the other end of the phone when they tell you it's a six month wait list. I need to be put on the cancellation list. Call once a week asking if anyone canceled. The squeaky wheel definitely gets the grease nowadays. And when you get in front of that brain health specialist, you need to be prepared. You need to have a timeline of symptoms, when they started, how they've changed over time. You need to have examples of the things you've been noticing. And typically we think of three areas for brain health that you want to focus on. Cognitive, mood and behavior, and function. Function is actually the most important. So how do the cognitive and the behavioral issues impact someone's ability to do things in their everyday life that give them meaning, help them be who they are in the world? You want to be very specific with the neurologist. Here's where I need help. Here's where I need support. Here are my questions. And that's going to require you to learn 
Learning as much as you can about your condition is going to help you be the very best advocate that you can be. And finally, if you have a good neurologist, please show them a lot of love and appreciation that they are there, that you realize that they are struggling as a specialty group and you appreciate the excellent care that they give you. Of course, I want to remind you that we don't just have neurologists. Board certified neuropsychologists are also here to help you navigate a brain health condition or concern. We are experts experts in the way that brain changes affect people, human beings, how they adjust to it, how it changes the way that they live, how they interact, their quality of life. And ultimately, our best offering is that we do very detailed assessments to give you personalized brain healthcare recommendations, things that are science-based, but are also very unique to you in your situation. So many times people have uh, been nice enough to comment on these I Care For Your Brain lectures and said, I never heard of a neuropsychologist before. So that's part of why I'm here is I want you to know what a neuropsychologist does and I want you to try to advocate for it for your care. If you have a brain health condition and you have not seen a neuropsychologist before, please ask your primary care doctor, ask your family medicine doctor, ask your neurologist, who do they know in the community that sees patients as a neuropsychologist? You really would benefit from seeing one of us. So here's what I want to know from you is what do you think about your access to neurological care? What grade would you give it? If we're starting with a, a failing grade of an F going all the way up to an A plus, you know, I, I can contact my neurologist anytime. They answer all of my questions. I feel supported by them. I feel like they have compassion for my situation. I want to know what grade you would give the neurologist. So please leave that in the comments. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel here, please do that. That helps more people learn about our mission to provide free brain health information so you can become your very best advocate. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm.